Hello! Hi! If you enjoy anything in this video, you should consider the following. Subscribe to me here on YouTube, follow me on Twitch, and on TikTok, where I make other forms of content and where I post my other content. Alright, cool. Enjoy the video. Twitch has been on a steady decline for the past two years and they have no idea how to fix it. They are potentially losing hundreds of millions of dollars per year, laying off hundreds of employees, banning some of their most important creators, implementing it's useless a features, for me and my ears constantly a proving bit. how little they know or care about the live streaming community. Twitch. Okay, fuck. First pause already. We finna run that one back because that's like painstakingly true and are constantly proving how little they know or care about the live streaming community. Twitch has been the biggest okay so um, fuck fuck second pause already um like so that shit right i've talked about that at length with plenty of people before who were not necessarily disillusioned but like like looking at twitch and streaming with rose tinted glasses thinking that oh because the people up top are up top they know what it's like to be a streamer and shit no no, they don't. They really fucking don't. Live streaming platform for the better part of a decade, but there is some competition on the horizon. Although it wouldn't take much for YouTube to put Twitch out of their misery, it's very likely that their collapse will come from their own self-sabotage. And before the video continues, right, YouTube has had plenty of opportunity to fucking, uh, um, dethrone Twitch from, uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's a gold crusted throne of streaming being a platform and whatnot, but they continue not to do that. Granted, yeah, YouTube is a video hosting platform first streaming platform, like, I don't know, eighth or some shit, but they've had many a chance to be like, yeah, fuck off. The throne is ours now, but they continue to not do that. And at this point, and this is just me being a fucking hater. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if YouTube is just like, yeah, we're just going to watch them crash and burn, and then we're going to actually work on the streaming side of the platform. First and foremost, Twitch's financial stability is confusing. And although they reported $2.8 billion in revenue in 2022, it's unclear how much of that, if any, was profit. However, there are a lot of implications that suggest the company is struggling to be in the green. Twitch's four ways of making money are through subscribers, who pay $5 a month to get an ad-free experience, as well as other small benefits. In-app purchases, which include bits, a digital currency that users can purchase to donate to streamers. Partnerships with brands and sponsors, and of course, the number one, advertising. We don't know how many total paid subscribers there are on Twitch. Yeah, we did find this yeah, metric from stream advertising Hatchet. can make people some money, but... The amount of money people make off the other three things is 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 fucking absurd compared to advertising because you got to have like multiple thousands and hundreds of average viewers that actually watch the shit. Well, they don't have to actually watch the shit. They just have to play for them. But who the fuck is making bank off ad revenue alone? that says in April of 2021, Twitch had 8.7 million subscribers, where 43% of them were Amazon Prime subs. A Prime subscriber is someone who gets an ad-free experience for $0 since they already have an Amazon Prime membership yep. because Amazon owns Twitch. Therefore, yep. Twitch doesn't make any money on that sub. In fact, you could argue they're losing money since viewers are paying $0 and not getting ads, and Twitch has to pay creators $1 and some change for that Prime sub. Anyways, uh -huh. this graph indicates that in the month of April, Twitch had 4.7 million paid subscribers times five dollars which is 23 and a half million times 12 months average which would be about 282 million dollars in sub revenue in 2021 but twitch on average receives between 30 and 50 percent of that money because for affiliate streamers twitch takes 50 percent or two dollars and fifty cents of the five dollar subscriber price and Correct. for partners they take 30 percent or one dollar fifty of the five dollars so if we favor the high end of 50 percent that would equal 141 million dollars in subscriber revenue that goes to Twitch. But if Stream Hatchet's estimation of Twitch only having 4.7 million paid subscribers per month is wrong, and they actually have around 10 to 20 million paid subscribers per month, that would bring Twitch's cut between 300 and 600 million dollars per year. Some people argue that Twitch taking a 50% cut of sub revenue is just an act of greed because most of their mm. money comes from advertising. Now, I mean, an act of greed? I, I would, as, as much as I have complained about it, 
I would err on the side of no because you got they they got to take something, right? 50% is like a lot, but it's either they do that and kind of sort of have the 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 coin to keep this bitch running or they don't. Now, 100 I'm not shilling for Twitch by the way. I am not a Twitch shill. 41 to 600 million dollars is nothing to scoff at, but compared to 2.8 billion, I see him as an act of need thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Explains. It's it's However, a it's not a necessity. It seems like Twitch needs this money to keep their business from failing. According to a blog post in November 2022, where Twitch president Dan Clancy who is now the CEO, announced that creators who make over $100,000 in sub revenue will no longer get their 70-30 split. It will go down to 50-50, and over time, all creators will split the sub revenue 50-50 with Twitch. Now that, that I heavily, heavily dislike, because that, that, that is so critically impacting so many people's bag, that is like, Jesus Christ, bro. Like, like I, I, I don't have an exact number for you, but pretty much as a very quick example, imagine going from making a mill every year to like 700k every year, right? That's a huge fucking cut, bro. That's affecting so many people's bag, and I don't like that <laughs> granted granted again again i'm not making anywhere near that kind of money off twitch but even still like you can have a heart for the people up top that's gonna be affected by that in one way or another which when this news initially made the rounds on that hellhole twitter there were so many people being like oh well they didn't need that money anyway it's more money for everybody else it's not it is not more money for everybody else, and that's fucked up to just be like, yeah, fuck them, they didn't need that anyway, bro. Like, imagine getting your fucking day-to-day -day paycheck, or week-to-week -week paycheck getting hit like that, bro. That's, that, that's, that's too much, man. Why? Well, because it's too expensive to run Twitch. Delivering Which is bullshit. High definition, low latency, always available live video to nearly every corner of the world, is expensive. Using the published rates from Amazon's Web Services Interactive Video Service, or IVS, which is essentially Twitch video, live video costs for a 100 CCU streamer who streams 200 hours a month are more than $1,000 per month. Now what they said here is very misleading. If you want to start your own live stream platform, you can pay for Amazon IVS, or uh -huh. basically Twitch's infrastructure. The problem with Dan's statement here is, there is simply no way Amazon is charging Twitch the same rate that anyone else would be charged for using IVS. Right, like fucking, when, when, when he said that, e even, even before I went and did my own personal research to look into it, I was like, bro, you're full of shit. This is this is wrong as hell, bro. But you know, people ate that shit up anyway, and it's like, no, no, that's not the move, dog. It'd be a lot better if we saw where well, the money was going to, being able to spend, you no, know, being able to see what's what spending the money on, how to using it better. The platform clip up a lot of issues. It would a hundred percent. And <laughs> for the sake of being funny, that requires the people who that run Twitch to have common sense. And we all know they ain't got none of that shit. But at the same time, right, if that were the case, there would be a lot less people pissed off with Twitch. It's purely from a financial spending aspect, right? Because the whole thing, oh, it costs too much. That, no. Because that would be assuming that the people that can maintain that 100 concurrent always stream 200 hours a month. And that, nah, nah, bullshit bullshit why wouldn't amazon do that well again because amazon owns twitch amazon would charge me or you one thousand dollars per month to deliver hd live video to 100 concurrent viewers at 200 hours a month but they likely charge twitch at least 50 to 90 percent less than that In exactly fact, nobody has any real idea of how much it costs to run twitch obviously you have employee compensation with thousands of employees but more importantly billions of dollars per year in energy costs to maintain those servers and deliver perfect quality 
on-demand streaming all over the world at any given moment. And although we don't know those costs, we could pretty safely say that taking a higher percentage from their partners is not going to cover the expenses. It's now, really regard- not, right? Because like, like, let's assume that it actually does cover the extra cost, right? What's going to happen when Twitch starts hemorrhaging money again and then like partners got to take an even bigger cut, which is going to lead to affiliates having to deal with uh, a, a bigger cut from what they make, bro. Like slashing 20% of someone's bag is not it, chief. Not it at all. And they think that's the move when it's, it's really not going to be the move. I, I'm I'm calling it now. It's going it's going to fail. And the more people that whose money that they slash, the more they're going to go to like YouTube or kick or whatever the fuck. Uh, the U.S. has an issue where we can see where the government is spending all their money. Exactly. Right. Like it shouldn't be a problem. To have that go into effect for Twitch. But again, they're never going to do that because as many things as they like to shroud in unreasonable secrecy, this is just going to be another one of those things. And I don't think they're ever getting anywhere close to that until it becomes like, okay, we got a lot of people pissed off. We got a lot of people leaving. We need to be some level of transparent and show what the hell we're doing with our money. Regarding how much Twitch makes from bits, it's unclear, but I'm sure most streamers can agree that bits donations are nowhere near as common as subscribers. Nope. It was reported that Twitch generated $185 million from in-app purchases. I'm not sure if this includes subscribers and bits together, or if it's just bits and other microtransactions like badges, gift cards, and loot cave. Either way, we are- What the fuck is that? Twitch has a merch store? Huh. Learn something new every day. Learning that at best, Twitch is generating roughly $750 million from subs and in-app purchases, or at worst, $185 million. Regardless of what the real numbers are, we know that without a doubt, Twitch could never survive on just paid subscribers and in-app purchases. Nope. Which means that likely the $2 plus billion in revenue they generated in 2022, pretty much it comes from advertising and brand partnerships. Uh-huh. The problem with this is, advertisements are destroying the viewer experience. I made a video about this i made a video about this a few weeks ago and not not to say that i'm saying anything new or revolutionary but multiple people especially since um like the what was it the middle uh latter half of last year where they introduced that bullshit ad incentive thing to where it's like hey run x amount of extra ads over the course of X amount of hours, and we'll give you a free bag, right? Like, there's a reason why so many people are like, fuck ads, ads are the worst, ads are ruining the platform. Like, like frequently, you got, uh, like, like the big name people, like, I'm pretty sure Hassan has said several, several, several times, ads are ruining the viewer experience. I'm pretty sure people like Asmin have said that ads are ruining the viewer experience. There are smaller people, like myself, mid-sized people, saying that <clears throat> ads are ruining the viewer experience and are fucking up the platform. No one likes this shit, which is why people link ad blockers, which is why people try to incentivize the hell out of subs, because, like, the streamer themselves, they, I know for a fact they watch you know, some people streams and shit, and it's like, man, this ad is annoying, let me drop some coin, if possible, to get rid of it, or, alternatively, it's like, oh, hey, you want a break from the ads, here's an ad blocker, you didn't get this from me, type shit, right, like, just, just, just the other day, um, someone, wound up becoming the main character of VTubing Twitter, which then broke out into content creation Twitter because someone was grandstanding and white knighting for, in in favor of ads, right? Saying that, 
oh, using an ad blocker is bad, and you're taking away someone's revenue, and this is wrong, and you shouldn't be doing that. And a lot of people, like, like I say, before the tweet got taken down, I'd say about, like, 92% of the quote retweets were like, you're full of shit, ads ruin the platform, people are not making as much money as you think they are, from ads, this is a bad take, L take, and shit, and then, you know, the other 8% was in defense of this shit, but that's under the assumption that people make bank off ads, and most people that are monetized on Twitch do not make shit from ads, right, like, fucking, um, like, like, the, the person... The person that made the original tweet was saying it as a joke because they don't like ads. So, of course, you don't know, make an ad blocker. Bam, that gets rid of it. Your viewer experience is not impacted as heavily as it is without having an ad blocker and without being subbed, right? And then the person who screenshotted that and made a whole ordeal out of nothing was on like, no, you can't be doing that and it's bad and people rely on ads and it's like bro 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 the majority of small streamers have lost out on so many potential viewers and fans and whatnot because they load the stream ads like like minimum two to three right and then you got the mid-roll bullshit to where it's like oh here's like three unskippable ads which by the way every single fucking ad on this fucking platform is unskippable Unlike YouTube, you can skip that bitch. No, you cannot skip them on Twitch, right? And and like in 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 the video that I did recently, people talk about the shit, and it's like, bro, ads are ruining the fucking platform. People are actively choosing not to use Twitch because they have to use an ad blocker if they don't want to deal with the ads and they cannot subscribe ads are a problem and very few people are really taking the time to think about how much of an issue that is right that's why people have been flocking on mass to kick granted outside of you know the 95 subscriber split or whatever the fuck kick ain't got ads from what i've seen right you ain't gotta deal with that bullshit over there and, you know, the, the, the stream, the viewer experience isn't being impacted by unnecessary shit. And it's just like, if, if they were to stop so, if they were to stop trying to push ads so fucking hard, maybe, just maybe, people would be more willing to use the fucking service. And maybe more people would be willing to sub if the only, like, true... Uh, incentive would be like, hey, I'm immune from ads for a month, right? It's bullshit. Does a cut that Twitch takes out include taxes or stack on top of that? Uh, I don't think it includes taxes. I would have to look at my own shit for my own payouts, but I don't, I don't think uh, taxes are included with that. Younger generations have gotten away from things like cable TV because most of them don't want to see ads all the time. Which is why most advertisers on cable are now trying to cater to older people. Exactly. Because because the difference, right, is that old folk are willing to watch the ads because, number one, they're used to it and it's just a part of cable TV and shit. Like, one one of the many reasons why I stopped watching cable TV um, back in 2009 was because... I didn't want to keep watching ads all the time. I got tired of having my shows interrupted by bullshit I didn't want to see. So I said, fuck this. I'm going to go watch my shit somewhere else. Why do I have to deal with that? And like a lot of those ads anyway weren't even weren't even for like the the kids that would be watching television and shit. Granted, you know, personalized ads aren't ever a thing when it comes to cable tv and regular tv and shit but if i'm sitting here watching fucking naruto 
I don't want to see a goddamn advertisement about monster trucks. I don't care about monster trucks. You're interrupting my ninja shit. Give me my ninja shit back. God damn it. But yes, ads are a fucking problem on this goddamn platform. And the higher ups aren't taking the time to realize that, hey, hmm, maybe we should slow down with that shit. Nah, we're going to force more ads on people because that's what gets us money. Like, fuck out of here, bro. Ninja Monster Truck ads. <laughs> Someone's probably making that shit into reality somewhere. Creators have a terrible revenue split with Twitch, which has led to a near 10% decrease in average viewership. God damn! Jesus Christ! And watch time for the past two years. We all know how annoying ads can be. Besides when I do them, because today's video is sponsored by Aura. Have you ever Googled your name and seen yourself on one of those I'm just gonna move sites past that has this. way too much where Aura comes in and submits monitoring and much more? Dot com slash Patrick C advertisements per hour. However, in late 2022, Twitch announced the rollout of the ads incentive program. Okay, it was late 2022. To run eight to 10 minutes of ads per hour, multiple minutes of ads being displayed consecutively will result in viewers either leaving the platform or clicking off to another streamer. Exact. Exactly. Wait. Wait, did y'all actually get hit by an ad? Bro, what the fuck? This is exactly what I'm fucking talking about, bro. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Not for real, I see one. See, bro, 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 bro. That's the thing, right? Fucking... Why, in God's great name, when the random fucking ads happen, it's like eight of them bitches, bro. Like, damn. Who, 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 in their right fucking mind, is going to sit through, willingly, eight un- skippable ads ain't nobody gonna do that shit i don't give a damn how long you've been watching somebody i don't give a damn how long you've been fucking with someone from from fucking pico second one bro ain't nobody sitting through eight god damn ads right because in between those eight ads you could miss like the peak of the stream you could miss like like someone dropping a hundred fucking gifted subs you could miss someone dropping ten thousand bits or whatever the hell you could miss out on some great shit because oh hey you want to watch eight ads and you can't avoid it type shit bro Man, I was about to go off with <laughs> Yeah. Let me be fair, in his case, that was affiliate marketing, which is a little... Yeah, 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 yeah. The only problem is, every time you click on a new stream, you will get hit with another non-skippable 30-second ad. That's the thing! Ooh! I... Bro. 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 Bo before I switched browsers to Opera, and then, you know, I installed two extra ad blockers, one specifically designed for Twitch. I hated trying to stream hop looking for <clears throat> looking for smaller streamers to like check out or just like looking for someone, anyone to watch play I don't fucking Sonic or Final Fantasy or Kingdom Hearts or Sly Cooper or something like that and shit. And I'm like, oh, this person looks interesting. Oh, 30 second ad about a fucking car that I don't care about. My interest and desire to watch is gone. My favorite thing is when there's a raid and because it's that you literally miss the entirety of the raid because you have to collect three home dude. That's the thing, right? Like, like I I I raid people sometimes, but I'm also like, man. I'm I'm, I'm kind of hesitant to, 
because they're going to get hit by a fucking ad because I don't know if people have an ad blocker or not, right? So, like, me rating someone is a net positive good for both parties involved and shit, but getting hit by an ad just makes people fucking leave. Like, that shit sucks, bro. Uh, do you think your work at content creators opted in to a free ad experience if they increased the, the cut that Twitch took to, like, 3 or 5% more? Do you think that... Other revenues like substance and nations cover that. I think. I think that. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I think that. At least. 80% of the content creators that are on Twitch that are monetized would take that offer without a second thought. I genuinely think that they would because again again with the amount of people that complain about the 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 ads ruining the experience both from a streamer aspect and a viewer aspect I think that a grand majority of people would take that shit because it means that people have more of a chance to build a following to build a community to get more eyes on their shit because the average twitch viewer attention span when it comes to looking for someone new to watch is between 5 to 15 seconds right that countdown immediately kicks in when the stream loads and that includes an ad right so unless the average viewer is really into whatever uh, uh, category that they went to someone to check out they're not gonna see the whole fucking ad and they're gonna go, go they're not gonna go bounce to someone else right and unfortunately you can't just constantly hop around and skip the ads because every single new stream you go to you get hit by some fucking ads bro and so in light of that if it was possible for streamers to take a heavier cut to what they make in exchange for not having to deal with ads, people would do that easily, willingly on top of that. Willingly. It will realistically not affect viewers, but content creators have a bad experience with tens of more money being spent. Exactly. Well, it's just what I'm living giving. <laughs> um fuck i don't remember what it's called but there's like some open panel uh thing where you can like submit suggestions to um if you google it you'll probably find it but you should probably like throw that bitch up there and see what kind of response they get or or you could uh uh take your chances with the fucking bird app and tweet that shit out and see what kind of response you get uh, i've always been lukewarm about raids and hosting well, the host feature is just gone because Twitch, again, is fucking stupid. But, um, I mean, hosting and raids were, were a net positive good thing because, again, you know, you're sharing your crowd with uh, someone else's crowd and, you know, um, more, it's more and more eyes on you and them. So it can work out, but there's also instances where rating probably isn't the best fucking idea because there have been instances where, like, like someone would raid or someone would get raided and then it, it, it's a crack shot on if they're going to be a cunt about it or not because there are people who, um, like, scoff and turn the nose up at, like, a one or two viewer person raid and there are people who just, like, like rag on you and shit on you just for rating the it's 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 a ball game you gotta play but it's a good thing for someone at the end of the day there is no way to skip the ads there is no way to escape the ads and there is no way to rewind the stream and see what you just missed this has led to a near 10 percent decrease in hours watched and average viewers from 2021 to 2022 Shit. both of those metrics are also down in 2023 by five percent damn put, there are too many ads on twitch but that's a good thing for the company right well not exactly 
Twitch does not have an immense amount of data on who their viewers are because there isn't a whole lot to do on the platform to track it. Think about YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. In just a few minutes, you will be exposed to a large variety of different niches, and you are actively yeah. pressing the like button or stopping to engage with the content. The yeah. amount of specific information you give about yourself without realizing is just data that gets organized and used to sell targeted ads to you. Because of my Instagram habits, the app knows that I like men's streetwear and accessories, skateboarding, modern furniture, rap music, and golf, so they can send me ads related to those things. All Twitch knows about me is that I watch I'm Dante a lot and that he's my favorite streamer, so they could maybe <laughs> guess what Good choice. I'd be interested in based on what they think I'm Dante's viewers like. And because of this, most advertisers don't feel comfortable using Twitch because they don't know if they are truly selling to their target audience. Are you... Yeah, um... Like, uh, e even, even if you look at your own anal... Uh, <clears throat> analytics and whatnot it's not as much of an accurate breakdown as it is on all those other pl thank you for the follow is really 488 uh welcome to quick team hope you enjoy your stay happy to have you here um what was it saying uh oh right um like, even when you look at your own analytics in, like, the breakdown or whatever, it is nowhere near as extensively detailed as it is for YouTube. I don't use, um, Instagram, and I do use TikTok, but I don't look at my TikTok analytics too often, outside of the fact that apparently majority of my, uh, viewership is, uh, women, so that's odd, but, um... Like, on YouTube, it gives me, like, the time of day, uh, the age group, the, the country, um, like, like, peak engagement levels, average engagement levels, like, it gives me all that shit, and Twitch is just age, region, and that's, like, pretty much it. Now, to be fair to Twitch, they are giving me, like, or not, not just me, specifically, but they are rolling out more things that allow for um better data to you know construct your shit and whatnot but it's still not as detailed as it should be for the kind of platform that it is I'm trying to advertise like twitch is like don't have to add on billboard you get eyes but it's like probably not the eyes that you want oh yeah oh yeah that that's that's a perfect way to fucking put it and quick side note <laughs> on the subject of uh billboards and advertisements and shit um a few summers ago there was a situation where someone on final fantasy 14 decided to advertise their in-game uh beach party with a real physical billboard advertisement and it was quite the fucking experience to uh bear witness to because holy fuck that of of the many things that you cannot do <laughs> when it comes to final fantasy 14 that is one of them and they did that shit willy-nilly with a smile on their face. And they were like, oh, well, you know, we didn't do anything wrong. And it's okay to do all that. It's like, bitch, no, you can't do that. And like you said, perfect example of not having the eyes that you want on your shit. That was just fucking horrible through and through. But damn what is it was it a good time to laugh at some shit <laughs> that shit was funny drinking water when you advertise on youtube a brand like pampers can target as specific as 28 year old married women that see see th this is this is exactly what the fuck i was talking about 
in the eastern United States and are pregnant or just had their first child. And YouTube can run ads so that mostly viewers who fit in that category will see those ads. If Pampers went to Twitch with that target audience in mind, they would simply not know where to run the ads. Yep. The only thing that Twitch knows is that their audience is mostly men ages 13 to 35 yep. who like video games. This eliminates a huge chunk of potential revenue because only a small amount of brands want to advertise to that audience. Energy drink brands, unhealthy snack brands, car brands, and other men's lifestyle brands love advertising on Twitch, which leads to interesting sponsorships like QT Cinderella baking a cake on a live stream, but with a manscaped partnership that says, we save balls on the screen. To make things worse for advertisers, shit like that is weird and shit like that don't make sense like like you know most of my audience from you know me being a jrpg centric streamer and in my content i would be ecstatic if the ads that was ran on my shit were jrpg focused and pushed that shit to other people like holy like the amount of the amount of times i've talked about trails and kingdom hearts and final fantasy and whatnot like if those are the kind of ads running on my channel that'd be great which by the way final fantasy 16 comes out next month i will be streaming final fantasy 16 and then the month after that trails into reverie comes out and i will be streaming all of that and when that game comes out that will be the only thing I stream until I finish it. I'm just saying that right now. So for July onward, you know what you're getting in for when you load my stream. Just letting you know ahead of time. I'm, <laughs> I'm dead ass not playing any other game until I finish that. Okay? Okay. Okay. Every deal has to be a long conversation with the ad sales team at Twitch. Back and forth emails, phone calls, contracts, a process that takes forever. But any brand or individual can simply go to YouTube, click start advertising, and run a campaign without ever talking to anyone. Yep. Twitch will never be a real competitor if they don't figure out a way to get more reliable data on their users and create a programmatic ad system so brands can sell to their audience without relying on communication with a Twitch employee. And because of their inability to produce substantial revenue, they hired internal leadership who would shift the focus away from creators and towards driving profits. Yep. The senior vice president of global creators, Constance Knight, created a new initiative, cut costs, cut costs, cut costs. Every decision over the course of her tenure was fully based on how it was going to increase company profits, which isn't necessarily her position since she is the head of global creators. Therefore, the needs of creators that ain't the were move constantly though, bro. Being ignored. In one specific example, Knight said that burnout was not a valid reason for creators to not meet contractual Hello? obligations. Hello? See, okay, wait, 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 wait. Before we continue on, this shit right here is exactly what I was talking about when I said that the higher ups don't know shit from dick about what people that actually do this shit go through, right? Like, like people get exhausted. People get tired. People probably want to switch it up or want something else to fucking do, right? And to be like, burnout isn't a valid reason not to meet your fucking contract, that, for, f first of all, fuck you. Second of all, why would you even let that fly out your damn mouth? Granted, again, right, higher ups don't know shit about those under them. But if someone is just not feeling it, you shouldn't punish them for that. Because there are people that stream hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of hours a month. And they might want to take a fucking break for a bit. Or they're just burnt out. Like, maybe they don't want to make streams. Maybe they want to make some videos and shit. Nope, can't do that. Can't do that. That's bullshit. 
If you don't know, most of Twitch's top creators have contracts directly with the platform where they are being paid essentially a salary or hourly rate to stream exclusively on the platform. Yep. These contracts require them to stream anywhere from 70 to 100 hours per month, which is roughly 3 hours per day or 4 hours per day if you want the weekends off. But the VP was not letting creators use burnout, or basically them being unmotivated to stream, as a valid excuse to not meet their monthly stream requirements. Fuck that, which led bro. To Twitch employees feeling like the company was losing its way. Twelve Twitch employees had gone to HR or logged complaints with their superiors overnight. Five had left the company, citing night as a reason. I don't blame them. Some em. of you watching could never be convinced that sitting at a computer and playing video games could become a stressful or an annoying job in any way, shape, or form. But at the end of the day, it still is a job, and anyone can burn out from any job that they do every single day for years. Another previous Twitch exactly, and like, like real, real, real quick comment about the um, about the stress shit, right? Like, back when um, back when like the hate raid issue was at its peak, um, people was getting stressed out about that because. They couldn't stream in peace without, like, constantly being hit by bullshit after bullshit after bullshit. Or, like, like relying on Twitch to uh, pay rent. And sometimes they wouldn't cut it. And they'd be stressed out about that. Like, there's a lot of... Stream streaming full-time is a very mentally and emotionally taxing thing that real people go through because it's a real issue and it just be like tough shit i don't give a damn that's that's crazy bro that's fucked up employee took to youtube to state how they feel about the company twitch doesn't care about creators i twitch i saw this i saw this guy's video looking like good video please watch it creators everything twitch has done for the last four years has been with the goal of feeling like they understand and care. Although this could seem like an employee who is just upset about being fired, Twitch has shown time and time again that no matter how large of a creator you are, they will take you down, even at your highest moment. Kai yes. Sinat, a creator who yeah. only oh just my god. streaming in Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I am so happy he's mentioning Kai. The amount of times Kai has gotten cucked for no reason has been crazy. In February of 2021, dominated Twitch in all of 2022. He reached the very rare milestone of 100,000 subscribers, which yep. made him the number one most subscribed creator at that time. This prompted him to do a subathon, which was a 24 7, 28 day long, non stop stream in February 2023 to try and break the record for earning the most subscribers on Twitch in a single month. That record was previously held by Ludwig at 283,000. Not only did Kai break it, he demolished it peaking at 306,621 yep. all-time subscribers sure it fucking did that he earned twitch 10 million dollars while kai only received a two million dollar payout these numbers were false and kai did not appreciate the narrative twitch made 15 to 20 million dollars on kai sanat yeah i'm not i'm not sure why people were pushing that out because the the numbers just don't add up bro because like like you know of their cut right Making him making a site that much and only seeing two mil? Come on. Come on. That's bullshit. And I understand that people want to see Twitch crash and burn, but don't make up a blatant fucking lie like that that's easily disprovable. People that made that shit, wrong as hell. Wrong as hell. Kai only brought about two million back to the, to the, to the. Bro, where y'all getting these numbers from? Where are these, bro, where, bro, where are these numbers coming from? Because now it's a narrative that I'm just a black man who's getting used for millions and millions and millions of dollars. Kai breaking the sub record was huge news, covered by publications like the BBC and Bloomberg. And most of us would assume that Twitch would do anything to boost Kai up. After all, he made history on their platform. At the very uh -huh. least, they would try to use this amazing moment to show the world what wonderful opportunities there are for creators on Twitch. They could squeeze out more press with Kai and do campaigns to get more people or brands interested in live streaming. But no, instead, they sent him a $100 pair of sneakers and banned him from their platform. Sure did. Better be a contract and then, oh, 
Sure fucking did. Congratulations, Kai, on your huge accomplishment. We are so proud of you. They effectively Laura spit in his fucking face. Your friends at Twitch. For some <laughs> ugly ass shoes. Unfortunately, there was no contract in that package. And I'm not even a shoe guy, but I can tell you those are some ugly ass shoes. Twitch did not see enough value in Kai to offer him a streaming contract. Or, they are making a very strategic business move. Twitch is very top-heavy, meaning the top creators are making all of the money. Yep. Only 5% of Twitch streamers made over $1,000 in 2021, and 50% of all of their revenue comes from 1% of their creators. Uh -huh. Kai became a one percenter without getting an exclusive contract, which means Twitch is profiting immensely off him. It seems like they are not giving him a paid contract because they don't think he will leave. His largest audience and main financial vehicle is on Twitch, and if it was up to them, they wouldn't give streamers contracts to begin with. They want to get to a point where they aren't as reliant on the top 1% of creators so if someone leaves the platform they will be just fine youtube has 600 creators but if that's the case if they're trying so hard not to rely on the top of the top maybe make it so that those that ain't at the top can make a little more change and y'all won't be struggling so much with over 10 million subscribers. If 20% of those people stopped creating, YouTube wouldn't be hurting financially. Eventually, those creators will be replaced. Yeah. But Twitch one percenters can't be replaced as quickly no. or as easily. Maybe Kai is a transitional point for Twitch as a company to see if they can keep 1% talent without paying them additional money. Just That's a few bullshit. Short weeks after they sent him the sneakers, Kai Sinat announced he was banned from the platform on April 17th. How could they possibly ban the number one creator on the site? Nobody knew because the why. they don't give a fuck. But it prompted support from people like Kyrie Irving and Nicki Minaj. We later found out that Twitch told Kai it was from a GTA clip where he promoted simulated sexual activity. This huh? was the clip. Come on. Five, four, three, two. Oh, my God! My boss! Did you come back? My boss! He pretended like he was receiving services from a fake woman in a video game. Meanwhile, there's a ton of real that's what they hit him for activity on that website, okay. let alone simulated. Twitch is just reminding him okay. that he, no matter how big he is, will not be able to break the rules. And everyone knows Twitch's terms of service are extremely unclear. But everybody else can break the rules because there there have been people that have done that and worse on stream before. Nothing absolutely nothing at all in 2019 brazilian twitch streamer gabriel baptista received a suspension because he showed a pink floyd poster during his broadcast faria was banned for wearing gym clothes that twitch claimed looked like lingerie huh Taylor was banned for smashing a keyboard over his head and dr disrespect was banned for well they never told him why Sadly, Kai's ban is just one of an extremely long list of incredibly stupid bans that Twitch has given out and will continue to in the future. Yep. So with Twitch continuously making the wrong decisions when it comes to profits, employees, and creators, is competition a real threat to their company? Recently, the live streaming platform Kick has made some noise after their $30 million plus deal where they exclusively acquired Aiden Ross. That was a mistake. And looks exactly almost like Twitch. The main difference is that they have a much more lenient terms of service. Streamers can gamble, say and do just about anything they want without That's a mistake. Banned. And the biggest thing is that they are offering creators a 95% cut of their subscriber revenue. That... As many issues as I... <clears throat> personally have with kick some of which are very slowly being um what's what i'm looking for removed due to uh some questions i had that got answered at some point the most enticing thing for people is the sub cut like 95% of what you make is outrageous.
Jared FPS, a kick streamer, highlighted his kick earnings at $3,800 for 800 subscribers, which would be about $2,000 on Twitch. Yeah. However, I don't think this is going to be enough to really compete with Twitch. No. Think about all of the problems I highlighted in this video. Kick is going to have to deal with all of those same problems. Uh -huh. But more importantly, with advertisers, they will be targeting the same niche as Twitch, but with less censorship and more risque content, yep. advertisers will feel even less comfortable than they already do with Twitch. Yep. But the biggest problem is Kick is built on Amazon IVS. Remember when Twitch said it was too expensive to run Twitch on IVS? Well, Kick uses the same infrastructure. The difference is Kick is likely paying at least 20 to 50% more than Twitch is to keep their business operating. However, the reason that they would do it for the time being is because they're backed by a uh, uh stake that uh that 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 crypto gambling place so yeah they can subvert the costs for a decent amount of time like they've been doing it for a while already but that's gonna get them at some point and then some changes are gonna be made and then um it'll go from there made the bird post don't lead to any trash from case people think about it Time will tell. Time will tell. So in a way, no matter how successful Kick gets, they will be paying millions, if not billions, to Amazon, who could use that money to fund Twitch. Mm -hmm. Now, YouTube gaming, or their live streaming sector, could very well be a threat. The worst part about YouTube is that the live streaming experience is just not as good. It the sucks. The chat is chaotic and hard to read. You can't look at chat logs, which makes it really hard to moderate. The raid feature is terrible. The discovery page for live streamers actually looks like they don't... YouTube has a raid feature? Don't update. The raid feature is terrible. The discovery page for live streamers actually that. looks like they don't update it. And they lack many of the small features that make Twitch streaming more dynamic and more fun. Yet even with all of those downsides, YouTube still holds nearly 15% market share in the live streaming space. So why Whoa. is YouTube a threat? It's very simple. YouTube has 2.5 billion monthly active users yep. compared to Twitch's 140 million. YouTube has a strong and reliable ad revenue system, yep. which generated $29 billion last year. Plus, they are offering seven. <laughs> My exact years. same reaction. YouTube has a raid feature. I didn't even know that. Man, that... Again, again, that, that just goes to show uh, that it's a problem and they need to step up their game. It's for streamers. And if you build a following up as a streamer on YouTube, you now have a whole YouTube channel that you can post regular videos on. You just uh -huh. build yourself two assets at one time. Most Twitch streamers have to post clips of their streams on YouTube in order to grow. And even still, the translation is not that great, and they end up being more popular on YouTube. If YouTube just got their live streaming page to operate exactly like Twitch or Kick, which wouldn't really be that hard for them, it wouldn't make any sense for small streamers to use Twitch. 1% nope. streamers like Hassan and XQC wouldn't immediately jump ship, or maybe never because they already have a huge following. At the same time, everybody has a price. Nobody thought Ludwig would switch platforms, but and he then did. he did. So why hasn't YouTube tried to take over? Especially since I claim it'll be so easy for them. Maybe they just don't see live streaming as a worthwhile business investment. Think about everything I mentioned in this video. Live streaming, as good as it can be, uh, it's too volatile. Like, <clears throat> you really got to be top of the top and on top of your game to have it not be that way and you know that also comes in external support that you would need from the people that watch and engage with you whereas video making is a is a one and done thing because once the video is done you got to upload it and that's it, really. You know, someone will watch it, someone will enjoy it, someone will share it, and then before long, you've got a video that has like a couple thousand views and whatnot. And if your channel is monetized, you keep putting out video after video after video after video, assuming it doesn't get demonetized, that gets tons and tons and tons of views. And then before long, you're like, oh, hey. I've made a nice chunk of change off ad revenue alone and whatnot.
but live streaming is is very 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 volatile and 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 fragile all the hurdles all the expenses all the bans moderation discoverability issues creator contracts man don't even get me started on discoverability issues advertiser uncertainty maybe youtube thinks that live streaming will never be as profitable as video on demand film sports entertainment and music streaming maybe live streaming will always be considered a niche subgenre of the entertainment industry until youtube sees a bar packed full of people paying a 10 dollars cover to watch hassan debate aiden ross or <laughs> kai sanat and 21 savage react to drake memes they probably won't even bother yeah. so what should twitch do well, they definitely need to figure out a middle ground with ads. They need advertisers to pay the bills, and we as viewers understand that. Maybe a feature could be implemented that allows viewers to skip an ad or two just in case they pop up at a crucial time in the stream. Ain't no, like, maybe that, that, that needs to be a feature. That should have been in place from the jump. Maybe even a feature that allows viewers to watch ads for a reward or uninterrupted ad time when there's some downtime in somebody's stream. Kind of like how that would be nice. will allow you to watch an ad for a reward. Or you could exchange personal survey information for less ads. It's invasive, but hey, they're going to try to do that anyway. And after yeah. they improve their ad system, just keep the 70-30 revenue split with all creators, big or small. Most platforms provide a better split than that, so that's the least they can do. Also, more clarity and consistency when it comes to streamer bans seems like a very fair ask. Just tell people why they were banned, in detail. Timestamp it, provide a clip. Every single time someone is banned, it should be the same process. Yeah. But most importantly, bans should be handled fair. If one person breaks the rules for whatever reason that should be applied to everyone else just because one person broke the rules and got punished doesn't mean someone else can break those same exact rules and nothing happens to them i don't like that they need to improve discoverability for small slash medium sized creators twitch streamers relying on youtube or tiktok to gain a following is absolutely ludicrous now, wait, hold on. I'm, I'm gonna let this part play a little more. Which is way too reliant on the one percenters. Okay. So, um, there was, uh, um, a clip from, uh, Ms. Kiff that was going around and he was like melting down at, you know, the previous comment. The following is absolutely ludicrous. And saying that, like, Oh, well, people that are small, I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. Uh, people that are small streamers are bad because they just suck at making content. And they suck at streaming. They should be better streamers, uh, do better and stuff. And it's like, of course, someone up there in the ranks would be saying that, you know, and, and like consciously forgetting that they were once a small streamer. And there are small streamers, and when when I say small, I mean like under <clears throat> under fifty average, right? Even though, even though like stat wise and data wise, having like five concurrent at any time, or it might be average, um, puts you at like the top five percent and whatnot. But my personal definition of a small streamer is being under 50 average, under 50 concurrent for an extended period of time and like, you know, not having tons and tons and tons of followers and whatnot. But he was like flipping his lid over that comment when I believe it was the ex CEO of Twitch or someone in a similar position saying that. Yeah, to grow on Twitch, you need to be posting your stuff to other platforms, which, to be entirely fair and reasonable, yeah, that makes sense, because you're gonna want your stuff on as many platforms as possible to get out there and get some recognition to yourself. However, to sit up here and say that people just need to be better at it and do better at it and to stop blaming the platform that's not entirely true because twitch's discoverability twitch's built-in discoverability is beyond atrocious it just doesn't work damn near
right? And to sit up and be like, oh, well, streamers just suck because they're not doing this and they're doing that and they're just bad streamers. There are streamers with really, really, really high production quality and that know what they're doing to put on a half decent show and they're just they just haven't hit the mark they haven't been you know recommended to the right people or no one's talking about them via word of mouth or whatever it's a ton of stuff that goes into that but to just be like oh they suck and they need to do better that's wrong and you know shame on him for saying what he said when he was once a small streamer anyway miss kiff just being miss kiff again twitch is way too reliant on the one percenters and they're way too reliant on other platforms ultimately i want to see twitch win and the streaming community wants to see them win as well i think live streamers are incredibly underrated in terms of their entertainment value and ability to hold an audience for hours on end but if they don't make these critical improvements and youtube just decides to invest a billion dollars into making youtube gaming a fierce competitor i think twitch could be on the verge of going out of business five to ten years down the line